in the second video, uh, we will uh, replace the code we had set in our uh, first uh, demonstration with uh, blinking LEDs, blinking four LEDs on the board, uh, with uh, a modified uh, code uh, that simply uses the switches uh, or push buttons, uh, we can say. Uh, I won't create again uh, a new project. I will simply modify the, the one I used earlier, which was called Blink LED One in the first video. Uh, so I simply uh, stop the debug session, of course. And uh, now in the edit mode, I remove all the code uh, earlier and copy paste the new code that I'm going to explain it uh, uh, in order to understand what uh, is in there. Copy, paste. So let's see the basic parts of this uh, code. First of all, we include uh, this header file uh, where all the names that will be used are uh, defined there. It's worth uh, moving to this file and, uh, uh, and see how all these, uh, the, the, for example, the addresses of the registers are defined uh, in a way that we can use it uh, conveniently, as you can see in the following parts of the code. Um, so uh, what we uh, do is uh, that uh, in the main function of our code, uh, in the RCC uh, peripheral, and specifically at the register AHB1ENR, uh, uh, which is an enable register actually, we enable what the names, what the, the, the names uh, imply here. So this is the GPIO D port enable, and this is the GPIO A port enable. Why do we want to enable these ports? First of all, you have to know, of course, that all the peripherals are shut down uh, in order to avoid the power consumption. How is this achieved? By simply switching off the clock that uh, feeds uh, these peripherals. So uh, when we are planning to use some peripherals like the GPIO D and GPIO A, as we will do in this project here, uh, we have to uh, give uh, clock to these peripherals. This is uh, accomplished using this command that I highlight here. As I said earlier, these are simple bits that are set to one in the register with this name here of the RCC peripheral. And uh, by setting to one these uh, bits, we give clock to our uh, ports. Now, GPIO D port, as in our first project, is needed in order to uh, set uh, the pins uh, that in the STM32 discovery board are connected to four LEDs. So we have to tell uh, to the peripheral that uh, the GPIO D12, 13 and 14 and 15, these are the numbers of the pin of the GPIO D, all these pins have to be set as outputs. Why? Because all of these pins are connected on the already uh, fabricated board, the STM32 discovery, uh, and connected to LEDs. But we have to tell this uh, in, the, in our program in order to make these uh, uh, GPIO pins outputs. Now, having initialized these uh, pins as outputs, uh, although we will also need uh, some switches, as you will see in the following parts of the code. We do not have to implicitly, to explicitly, let's say, uh, define which will be input because any GPIO pin that we do not declare it as output is initialized as input anyway. So that is why we do not have to uh, define our inputs. Now, what we will do is that we will have uh, an infinite loop, this one here, this is a while loop that does not end, where we will simply uh, check one of our switches in order to see 
if it is pressed or not. Where is the switch that I'm going to, uh, to press? Well, we will use some of the push buttons. There are two push buttons actually on this board. And as you can see, we can read their status from the GPIO A port. That's why we uh, gave clock to the A port. Now, in order to check this one, uh, the, the push button that we were going to check is at the uh, A0 pin. So GPIO uh, 0 pin has to be ended. We have to do an end operation with the whole value. This is a mask value which has uh, a one, a single one at the uh, bit number zero. So if we like to check if the bit number zero is one, we do an end of this mask with the register IDR, input data register. This is the register we read in order to find out the level of the input pins. So if this pin is pressed or not, in general, if it gives a level one, we will get a non-zero value from this end operation. So if we get a non-zero value from this end operation, then we will turn all the LEDs on. How we'll accomplish this? We write a single one at the specific position. The first LED is at the, third, at the 12th position, the second at the, th at the 13th, the third at the 14th, the last at the 15th position. And where do we write this value? At the BSRR uh, register. So if we write uh, a single one at these positions here of the BSSR register, the BSRR register of the GPIO D port, the LEDs will, uh, will be turned on. Else, if the switch is in the opposite condition, we have to turn off the lights. How is this accomplished? This is a little bit tricky in this microcontroller. We have to write one again at the same register, but at the position shifted by 16 uh, positions uh, left. So actually, in order to turn off the bit, the LED uh, connected at the GPIO D12, we have to place a one at the GPIO D BSRR register at the position 28, 12 plus 16. So let's see if this works. I'm in the same project that I, that I built in my uh, previous video. I simply build this one here from the project build target. Okay, zero errors, two warnings, not a problem. So I can Proceed, uh, proceed to downloading it to the flash. I get this message here. It has been written quite fast. And now I can start. Stop the debug session. I start it actually. And let's move uh, step by step uh, these instructions. Um, so. Initialization, I go into the while and I do not press anything. So let's see what happens if I do not press any button on the board. It goes to the else. So uh, it probably does not give uh, a one indication if it has not been pressed the push button. So I turn off the LEDs. We will see later uh, the operation on the, um, on the board. If I return back, oh, okay, I, I do not have to do this um, uh, uh, sequentially because the, this is a, a, a loop uh, that simply inserts a delay. So uh, I stop the uh, operation, but I will place a breakpoint here. How we can place a breakpoint? By debug, uh, insert, remove breakpoint. So. If we get a breakpoint here and I start not uh, step by step uh, executing the instructions, but from the run, 
it will uh, directly I guess it has stopped to my uh, breakpoint. So let's see what happens. No, it did not find the breakpoint. It's quite a long uh, delay here for uh, the simulation. So I have to make it a little bit faster. It's just an indication here, so I stop debugging and you will see the correct value later uh, from the video. So let's stop the debug session in order to build it again. Okay, uh, project build. Good, uh, I start debug session. The breakpoint is still in its position. Okay. So let's start uh, running. Okay, now it stopped at the breakpoint. Let's see the next instruction goes to the else because I do not press anything. So I continue. And it quickly returned to my breakpoint. I do not press anything again. So the next instruction is again at the else. Uh, I run, goes again to the breakpoint. But this time I press the push button. So when I run again, it stopped because um, uh, well, I actually I think I just pressed the reset button uh, instead of the one uh, that I wanted to uh, to check. So yes, let's start it again. It was interesting to see how you can terminate abnormally this uh, session. So I start it again. Uh, start the back session. Okay, not a problem. Again, the first time I go to the breakpoint, I don't press anything. It goes to the else. Next time I go to the breakpoint, I press, let's see carefully to avoid pressing the reset button. Okay. I keep pressing the right button, I guess, now. So the next instruction, as you can see, it's here. It's in the um, uh, in the first LED. Uh, you cannot see it right now, but it uh, turns on the, these LEDs here, and it will keep it uh, uh, open. It will keep it uh, turned on as long as I press the push button. So next time... Uh, I keep pressing the button, so again it, it goes to the turning on the LEDs. And I can think I can uh, switch to my video uh, camera so that you can see the results of this uh, project. So as you can hear me, see me here, uh, the project has been paused at a position where all the LEDs are uh, switched on. Uh, now I will uh, continue running the program and you can see that uh, they are permanently switched off why because I do not press the button so let's see what happens if I uh, press the right button that I was checking within my code this is the the blue button here so as long as I keep it pressed the LEDs are on when I release the button it is off when I press the button, it is on. When I release the button, it is off. So it works correctly as I was expecting. See you at the next video.